let's go back 27 years. Um, what brought you into the industry in the first place? Were you a gamer yourself? Yes, I have been. Um, yes, I have loved games my entire life. Um, I, I grew up in a, in a very small town in Lake Tahoe called Incline Village. Mm -hmm. And my town was my town was so small that we didn't even have mail delivery. We had to go to the post office every day. And we would see, you know, three or four friends we'd run into every time we'd go to the post office. Yeah. And I um, and I also was very motivated to organize our neighbors and fr and, and family around game nights. And I, I really loved the I, the social connection and that shared experience of competing and playing a game together. I was it was a high motivation for me. So then 27 years ago, I was working in architectural firms and I was contacted by a friend of a friend about a game company that was looking for a product manager to come run their online community, Westwood Online. Mm -hmm. and at the time, it was a million people, which seemed gigantic to me. It was over a hundred times the size of my little small town that yeah. I grew up in. And so the idea that I could organize and curate and oversee and help enable gameplay game matches across a million people was fascinating to me. And so I immediately jumped at the opportunity. And then here I am today, you know, um, with, with Electronic Arts, and we have over 650 million player accounts in our network. Well, of um, course, is, you know, over almost twice the size of the US. And so it's, it's, it's incredible. And the idea that I have had a career in creating games and enabling these social connections for people to have these shared experiences and to entertain them is phenomenal. And people don't even have to go to the post office to connect. <laughs> socially well, games what's interesting that that million people that you had back then, uh, I, I don't know what the demographics were, but certainly we've seen a lot of debates over the years over the portrayal of women, um, you know, incorporating uh, women as players, but also characters. I know that you have, by virtue of um, your profile and, and probably your interest, been involved in these debates. What was it like then? And what do you think have been some of the key changes that have made gaming more inclusive? Mm -hmm. Gosh, great question. And one of my favorite subjects. Um, yes, yes. 27 years ago, um, I was often the only woman in many meetings and in and, um, and, and many of our um, you know offices, for sure. Um, but it's but it has evolved quite a bit. And I think that um, women have a huge interest in gaming. There are over three billion gamers in the world and half of them are women. And so the idea that we would have an industry that is primarily comprised of men creating content for the world in which we live in. Um, we just knew we had to evolve and and make changes. And I, you know, today, fast forward to today, 50% of my leadership team are women. And many of those women have 50% of their leadership team as women. And so I, I just have been highly motivated to bring the voice of women and to diversify and have inclusion um, in our teams, how we think about things. Um, and I also passionately believe that when you do that, the content that you create and the content that you put out in the world will represent the player base in which we're creating games for. So, you know, I, and I, I, my advice to people is the, it seems like a, sometimes these obstacles or the opportunities seem so vast and you just don't know where to start. I just believe a, you have to model the behavior and just get, just get started somewhere. And, um, and I've, I've been working on this for many, many years. And again, here we are 50% of my leadership team are women and you just chip away at it as you go year after year. How are you feeling about the content? Cause it is aspirational and you can't crowdsource. Um, you can't crowdsource stories or, or excellence or characters always uh, often it's, you know, it's the creative genius of the creator. Do you have favorite characters yourself that you think might not have, um, you know, existed 27 years ago, given the the perceived demographic of the population back then? I just I'd love to get some sense from you as to how the actual, you know, the meat and potatoes of the product has shifted. Yes, I, I, that's a great that's I love that question. And um, Gina Davis has been a, a pretty significant mentor and um an example i think and how to she's going to make you run for office if that's the case because <laughs> she she loves getting women into politics so but... <laughs> oh dear <laughs> thank you for the warning <laughs> um but she has just done a phenomenal job creating frameworks and i um used her inspiration to create an inclusion framework for our company and what i what i believe about a creative culture and, and being a leader of creative people. It's not about being directive or prescriptive. It's about expanding and, and creating 
awareness and intentionality about mm. what we create. And this framework that we created, again, was very much inspired by what she did for TV and movies. And it was to raise awareness. It was a, to raise awareness around, I want you to be aware that um, the number of lines of, a, of dialogue that are being spoken by women or underrepresented um, t- you know, talent or underrepresented people in our games, and that our designers and storytellers can be intentional and deliberate about the content they're putting in, out in the world. And I just, I believe so much in the values and principles of the team members that work here that I felt like if we had that, if they had awareness and we had framework and they had tools that they could use to evaluate and assess the content they're putting out in the world, that they would do the right thing and that they would have the right balance and that they would create the content that they would, that they want consumed um, by the world. And so we created that about, um, six years ago. And since then, we have an entire um, positive play group that's dedicated to inclusive content, safe communities, and um, and, and reducing toxicity for women and, again, underrepresented people in the yeah. world in our game experiences. So it, it, it was one of those things that started small and just scaled. And again, this is the chip away at the um, opportunity. Um, and it's something that has resulted, I, I believe, in quite diverse content we have. We, we've had you know, some of the first we were the first in sports to bring women's teams into our games. Mm-hmm. And we have had some amazing female um, pro- uh, and protagonists in our games, such as our Star Wars Jedi, uh, Star Wars Battlefront game. Um, so I'm I'm really proud of what this work and this framework has resulted in, in the content. And the, and the sports, as you said, sort of creating some, you know, actual sports. Run. 